incredible in the driver's seat. 910 feet of left turns. The speeds are just phenomenal here. And only 40 feet wide. And you need to use every inch of the racetrack. The biggest names in stock car racing have one thing in common. A win at Bristol. Who will be next to join the Bristol Brotherhood? 150 laps must be survived to know the answer. Typical Bristol wreck. Oh, oh he gets no. it to Well, that's one way to get him out of your way. There's no room for mistakes. Drop down early, disaster follows. Don't drop the left side. Pass that yellow line. That's where the banking changes. Passing is elevated to an art form. The beauty of this racetrack, you're in very good control one minute. Bang, 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 and you're gone to set. Only one master will sign the canvas tonight when horsepower meets the concrete canyon. And that, you have to say, was a racing deal at Bristol. Get ready for a rough ride as the Hooters Pro Cup Series tackles Bristol Motor Speedway. The pressure's going to get to some of these drivers. We're at Bristol, baby. This is what it's all about. Light the fires at Bristol Motor Speedway. The second time in USAR Hooters Pro Cup history. Tonight it's the Food City 150 presented by Naturally Fresh. 12th race of the 2005 season, Hooters Pro Cup South Tour Stars. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Scott Sutherland is alongside. And tonight, Brett McMillan and Stephen Cox are with us on pit road. Pressure at Bristol. Huge crowd on hand. You're racing before movers and shakers. This is a slick racetrack. Scott, what do we see here tonight? I think the biggest thing is this type of racetrack makes a driver say, do I really want to be a race car driver? It is that intense. Well, it's warm here, as you would expect. The concrete canyons of Bristol always very slick. 36 cars and drivers will take the green flag in just a couple of moments. But first, Scott, show us the track map here at Bristol. Well, it's a half mile, but it's a very, very fast half mile. 36 degrees of bang makes you feel like you're inside a, a silo, if you will, if you're a farmer. The car goes through the corner so fast, you actually hold your breath. And the transition between the asphalt and the concrete is really critical. Well, you want to stay on the concrete. If you go down and try to catch that apron in the asphalt, you'll get yourself in trouble. It was a wild qualifying session here earlier in the day. Driver introductions underway at Bristol on this Wednesday evening. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from qualifying earlier today. One of the drivers in trouble, Bill Manful. He got two wheels inside that yellow line. Yeah, you drop down and catch that apron just a little bit. There's such a transition. The car will bust loose. This is Wayne Willard in the Bowen Home Chevrolet. Been very strong this year. He gets a little tank slapper going here. Very careful to correct it. Most of the time you want to stay left and keep it pointed left and hold it to the floor. Stacy Perrier in the 0-1 from the North Tour. Looks like he had a motor let go. Well, there's one of those situations. You have to stay in it to try to make this race. Fastest of all of the 38 cars and drivers who came here, Super Shane Wallace in his sport. He's the Advanced Auto Parts Pole Award winner. We talked to him earlier. Well, first poll of the year, congratulations. And of course, as at Bristol, it's always very quick. Yeah, I am, uh, thank you for that. Uh, you know, it's a fast race track. You have a good hound race car. You have a good guy on top of the pit box crew chief in it. And uh, we put it together today. You know, we unloaded fast. We tested fast here. We didn't think we were going to be that dominant. I mean, not really dominant. We haven't sealed the deal yet, but uh, we knew we had a good car coming in there. So our Advanced Auto Parts poll award to Shane Wallace. Sets a new track record of more than 123.2 miles an hour. Well, he was very excited, but you could tell it's been a couple minutes since he got out of the race car. To go that fast, you wouldn't have been able to talk to him when he first got out of that car. <laughs> That's the excitement level these drivers feel at being here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Downstairs to Pit Road, back to Brett McMillan. When a sport where futures are usually cloudy, row five has two guys who already know what they're doing next year. Mark McFarlane announced this week he's moving up to the Bush Series full time, driving for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And your whole team's going too. Are you excited about that? Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean, to know this early and be able to look forward to it uh, and be able to prepare like we can. And it's going to be awesome. Uh, we signed up the Navy this week, and we're real proud of that. And the Student Motorsports team, uh, 
but uh, this tonight we're here to, to race this wind fuel car and try to win this championship and uh, we got a good shot at it didn't qualify too good but uh, this thing will go to the front all right well Bristol you go up and down so many times you actually make it seasick so we'll see how that all plays out meanwhile Joel Kaufman's over here Joel has already announced he's driving a Bush Series car next year full-time already driving in some this year tonight you're coming down from the north to try, try things out a little bit, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we just came down here to run the south race at Bristol. It's my first time ever here this morning, uh, first laps we're turning practice, and uh, just trying to give me some seat time in the hitters race here for the bush race on Friday night. Uh, we're going to run the Super Cuts 12 car again, so just really uh, you know, looking forward to it and uh, using tonight as a test session for that. All right, that's a busy weekend for him. And let's go down pit road a little bit further. Stephen Cox standing by. Thanks, Brett. I'm back in row number 10 talking with the guy who won at Sherrillville, Indiana just last week. Jeff Agnew, the 1998 champion in this series. You won last week when you were desperately ill inside the race car. That's only been a few days ago. How do you feel now? Oh, I feel fine. You know, uh, that's a pretty tough race, but we had such a great car. You know, uh, I think my son of 19 months could have won with that one. So, uh, you know, we're struggling a little bit here today. Uh, don't know how they're this much quicker than we were uh, to qualify this far back, but uh, maybe we'll have a little something for them in the race. Thanks, Jeff. Now let's look across row number 10 at the, the sixth, the sixth winningest driver in the history of this series with 10 wins to his credit. It's Michael Rich, and I'm going to jump in and interrupt him. He's getting ready to jump in the car in just a second. Michael, you're outside row 10. Can you win from that far back? What's your work going to be like tonight? Oh, yeah, man. We, uh, the only thing that's going to stop us is, is, is the is a lapse of the race. It's only a 150 lap race, but um, you know, it's a new car. We've been running extremely well here for the last four or five races, and um, this is a little bit different animal com compared to what we're accustomed to. But um, oh, yeah, man, we can take this Jack Roo car and, and, and get it up front. This is, we're we're kind of back here in the death squad, is what I call it. You know, we're right in the middle of everything. So um, just take our time and, and, and try to get this uh, Jack Roo barbecue sauce car up front and be smart and put four tires on around lap maybe 65, 70, somewhere right in there. And, uh, and go for the win. And Michael Rich will start smack in the middle of everything, guys. Let's go back up top. Now he will start 20th outside row number 10 in the Jack Roo Meat Sauces car. Final preparations underway, getting close to the green flag at Bristol. But first, let's have a look at what happened here in the City 151 year ago. The first time the Hooters Cup stars came to Bristol. Shane Huffman had to drop to the back, although he qualified on the pole for the inaugural running of the Food City 150. Bobby Hill would lead the field to green from the outside pole, but you know at Bristol, the action is always going to get started early. We'll show you lap number nine. Greg Marlowe, Jason Sarvis were tangled coming off of turn two. The first of nine caution flags on the evening. No one hurt, and there are some of the cars who weren't able to continue. Bobby Gill got turned around. He was the leader through lap 55. Clay Rogers, Bud Kenny, Matt Carter all involved in that tangle. Stacy Furrier got to take it out here on lap 92. He got into the outside wall. Jeremy Bowser put it into the wall as well. Both those cars very heavily damaged. By lap 110, Shane Huffman was able to scoop to the front of the 84 car. Clay Rogers in tow. Huffman was headed to the house. Rogers finished second. Shane Huffman bagged perhaps his biggest victory of 2004 in the inaugural Food City 150 here at Bristol Motor Speedway. We will be right back. A quick timeout, and the cars will be ready to fire at Bristol. We'll be right back from the world's fastest half mile. This telecast of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants, the official neighborhood restaurant of USAR. Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil is the worldwide leader in heavy-duty and high-performance lubricants. Miller Lite, the official beer of USAR. Miller Lite. Good call. And by Naturally Fresh. Pour it on with Naturally Fresh salad dressing, soft. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Tri-Cities of Bristol, Tennessee. USAR Hooters broke up south toward the Food City 150, closing in on the start here tonight. Fast place, slick surface, hot weather. What kind of pit strategy will we see here tonight? That sounds like a heck of a combination you're putting together. I know one thing. You're going to drive the car as hard as you can go because you have to stay up front to stay out of trouble. Michael Rich, those guys that are kind of, they got good race cars that are caught in the back, they've got to miss the big one, as it always happens at this type of racetrack. Now, it's hard to pass on the outside here, but if you're Michael Rich or any of the fast cars in the rear, you're going to have to take some chances. I don't really don't think so, Rick. What you do is you go down in the corner, a typical Bristol pass, you get leave yourself a little bit of room in the middle of the corner, get a run off, get your nose up underneath them, take away that position down the straightaway. That's how you pass at Bristol. 
Well, the folks from Aaron's Rent to Own certainly enjoying themselves here tonight in Bristol. That's a nice deck with some beautiful chairs they've got. Okay, gentlemen, start your engines. Jesse Lewis from Food City giving the command to fire the motors. 36 cars and drivers participate tonight in the Food City 150. Strapping in, putting the window nets up, locking the steering wheels, getting ready to go racing. For drivers, it's just the nervous anticipation of starting at Bristol. Kind of like the first time you ever went on a commercial jet. <laughs> you knew you wanted to do it, but man, how's this going to work out? 36 drivers ready to find out how it will work out here in the next couple of hours. Our naturally fresh starting lineup, Shane Wallace on the pole. With that new track record, Clay Rogers in the Johnny Suzuki 44 will line up in second spot. Bobby Gill with a brand new car, and what about Ken Butler? Terrific run by the Aaron's dream machine, Ken Butler, the third. In row three, last year's winner, Shane Upman, the Knights Company's 81, and Michael Falk, the liftoff energy drink 53 car. Back to row number four tonight at Bristol. Matt Carter from Denver, North Carolina, the LCT Ford. Andrew Rogers in the Termidor Taurus. That's car number 18. Row number five here tonight. Here's Joel Kaufman and Mark McCullough. This ought to be a good row. And I think this is great to come here. Joel Kaufman talking about getting experience here at Bristol. There's no other way to do it. we got to show up the red. Danny O'Quinn back with us in the 0-2. And we'll start 11th alongside Curtis Davis invading from the North Tour. And back in the 68 car, Curtis Davis very good at the high bank. Billy Bigley qualifies 13th alongside Jason Sarvis. Jason Sarvis, good to see him run good, but Billy Bigley has a lot of experience here in Bristol in another division. In row number eight, the Dodge of Stephen Wallace. The Food City Dodge and Georgie Brunholz will win the Tucson car number 20. That is a four. Back to row number nine as we get set to go racing tonight at Bristol. Jay Fogelman in the 22 car. How about North Tour Invader Brandon Collins in that Collins Chevrolet? And you know, the funny thing is Jay Fogelman was helping Brandon just a couple weeks ago. What a great way to start. 10th row, there's Jeff Agnew, the NGA Hooters Golf Tour 73. Michael Rich in the Jackaroo Sauces car. That is the 28. One of the better cars in the South Series. He talked about having problems early in the race. Toby Porter and Daniel Johnson will make up row 11 tonight. Daniel Johnson in the Chicks Cash 56 car. And in the 12th row, John Sarpercone. He's a rookie. He's been with us a couple of times in the 88. North Tour Invader Rick Markle in car number 60. Row number 13 as we work our way back through the 36 car starting field. Caleb Holman making a rare appearance in that 77, and Mike Herman Jr., he ought to be good here. Yes, I think Mike does very good at these high banks. Shouldn't, shouldn't have any problem with that. Chase Pistone doesn't qualify very well. The Metro Line Expo 40, but he'll come from 27th. And Wayne Willard, we saw him spin in qualifying in the 0-1, the Bowen Home Chevy. 15th row, Randy Gentry back to Harrison's Workwear 19. And Stacy Perrier in that 0-1. He is a North Tour invader and a great driver in his own right. Jody Lavender and Bobby Joe Woodley make up the 60 throws. How about Jody Lavender? Didn't qualify well at all. And we really thought he was one of the favorites to be in the top five and made it run in the top five all night long. Bill Manville has the 30, the Montgomery Motor Speedway car. Jeff Rourke from the North Tour in car number 80s from Abingdon, Virginia, the Buchanan Paint Machine. Go number 18, Kirk Leone, the Kirko Motorsports Board. That's the 52. And from Canada, DJ Kennington in the 17 from St. Thomas, the SM Freight Castrol Machine. And he will start shotgun on the field. So 36 cars, big crowd on hand. Fogelman in the Lucas Oil car, the 22. He'll carry one of our onboard views for us here tonight. And Jay will start back in 17. He's got a long way to go. But he can show us how to get to the front, but I think primarily what we're going to see is how to pass at Bristol Motor Speedway. Jay does have a lot of experience here. He'll show us how to get to the front. Georgie Brunholz, new paint scheme on the Tucson Ford tonight. A lot of teams debuting new stuff here at Bristol late in the season. George starts in 16th in that Tucson car. Yeah, right in front of Jay Fogel. We'll be able to see these guys all night long. You've got to pace yourself, but you've got to miss the big one. Jason Sarvis, the naturally fresh food. Haskell Willingham Ford, he lines up 14th. He'll be carrying one of our onboard looks as well. Sarvis is a guy who knows how to get around here. Well, his experience of going to a lot of these racetracks really helps Jason, but he works on his own race car. And I think to have the understanding of your own race car at this type of racetrack is really good. What about Ken Butler the third in that Aaron's car all the way up in fourth? We talk about him being in the back of the field so much. Ken Butler, great job to be up in fourth position. Well, our Aaron's weather tonight, plenty warm, 87 degrees. We don't think there will be rain. 94 degrees on a racetrack, but I think that combined with the other brand of tire used in the Craftsman Truck Series, these BFGs are going to have a little bit of a time getting a hold of it. Well, Shane Huffman selected tonight in the Team Hooters Challenge. Our Team Hooters Challenge winner, Eric Sinks from the Tri-Cities. If Shane can win again, he gets $500, as does Eric Sinks in the Team Hooters Challenge. He must have watched Shane Huffman last year win the pole, go to the rear, come back, and win the race. 
150 laps ready to go. We're glad you're with us tonight, and the green flag is in the air. Clay Rogers takes him down into turn one. We're underway at Bristol. Bobby Gill and Huffman. There's Butler. Michael Falk in front of Mark McFarland, and Rogers takes off. He's got a five car length lead already. And I think that's what you, you want to run hard for the first five, six laps. These other guys in the middle of the field, they want to just get single file so they can kind of sort the race car off. Ken Butler starting fourth, his best career starting position. Didn't look like he was quite ready to mash the gas on the opening green flag. He got passed by a couple of cars, now settling in in fifth spot. You listen to that engine, it barely even cracks. He just lifts for a little bit, goes right back to the floor, really before the center of the corner, and drive it out the other side. Mike Herman there in the fire side, number 34. There's Michael Rich trying to move up from 20th. He's got Jeff Agnew in tow. Rick Markle there as well. There's Randy Gentry, the Harrison's work for 19. Play Rogers up in front, and here comes Shane Wallace now. Rogers got a good drop at the initial throwing of the green flag. Wallace chasing right after him up on the backstretch. Well, he had to wait till the air pressures come up. So these cars, you can see the sparks fly out from underneath them. Mostly because the tires are not up to air pressure yet. Wow, look at that move. Wallace diving to the bottom. Oh, he turns oh, Rogers. Oh, oh. Clay Rogers just keeps it off the wall. Maybe taps the wall. Wallace gets into him. Lots of tire smoke. The field scatters. It'll be our first yellow flag of the night here on lap number five. Shane Wallace, I think, just too aggressive too early. Well, you've got to commit to that position you've got to be all the way there you can't drive it into that corner that hard clay rogers just very lucky to keep it out of the wall that was a heck of a hit you can see that he scuffed up the nose piece on the 44 and we looked like he brushed the concrete here it is again and you can see wallace getting a wheel on the asphalt there just bumping the car down too low and the thing is he drove it in too far but both ends of clay rogers car dragged on the wall but it never hit really hard Nah, I just can't believe he saved and kept it on the fence. One more look. What would make Shane Wallace think he could fit that car in and make the pass? I, I really don't know. I, I don't know if he thought that the 44 was going to stay up to let him dive into that hole, but I really think you've got to be patient. We're way too early in the race to take those kind of chances. Coming it, down the front straightaway, here's a nose-on look. The thing is, it happens so fast here, the spotter doesn't even have time to key up the radio to let Clay Rogers know that there is somebody underneath him. It's already over with by the time you get on the radio. Remarkable these cars stayed off the wall. Well, Shane Wallace's 38 does not appear to have sustained much damage either, but probably some flat-spotted tires. Now, remember here at Bristol, pit road on both sides of the speedway, back and front. So several teams will come to pit road early here. I'm surprised the teams would decide to stop so soon. Among those cars making an early stop, the 22 for Jay Fogelman. The Black's tire team going to work on the outside. Steven, what's he trying to accomplish here? Jay Fogelman has said, guys, we really don't need to make any changes on this race car. He's fairly happy with it, but of course, you don't have a lot of information to work with. They're going to make a two-tire stop only, and the Lucas Oil car will head back out. So Fogelman with two tires. Meantime, one of the drivers involved in the spin is in front of Brett. 38 of Shane Wallace. Car looks clean. Don't see any damage on that. Behind him, Clay Rogers in also. Again, looking for the damage. Doesn't seem to be anything serious on that car. Of course, aerodynamics, not a big problem, but we do have a jam up here at Pit Road. Got a couple cars bump as they're getting stopped leaving Pit Road. But no serious damage. The 38, Shane Wallace is gone. The 44, Clay Rogers, still here. And they are doing significant work. You can see the front nose of that car. And there is a lot of different paint on there, as he does have, that's scraped up just a little bit. Well, you can definitely see the scrapes on the 44 car. The 38 car, Brett couldn't see the damage on the right-hand side of the car as he came down pit road like you and I can. The right front fender may be in the tire. They're going to have to be very careful with that. Watch for any smoke. Well, both Rogers and Wallace give up a lot of track position here. And Clay Rogers, who has struggled mightily this season, the defending Hooters Pro Cup national champion, back up on the racetrack. So preparing for a restart, first caution of the night early in the Food City 150. We'll be back here on Speed. 
Preparing for a restart at Bristol Motor Speedway, the USAR Hooters broke up South Tour Stars, second running of the Food City 150. An early caution, Clay Rogers and Shane Wallace going for the same piece of real estate down in turn one. Both cars spun, they're back on the racetrack, but this jumbles up the lineup considerably as we prepare to go green. And it'll be Michael Falk leading him to the restart this time with Curtis Davis in second spot. Now, we heard Brett talk about a jam up on pit road. Look at Bobby Gill here. Everybody's trying to get to the end of pit road. The first come, first serve type deal. They're gonna hold him here till the line goes. Bobby Gill trying to get out and get in line. Contact really could have knocked the right front corner. Oh, great job on Mark McFarland. McFarland was hit though in that incident by Gill. Was Gill just assuming McFarland would stop? He had to swing wide to get around Clay Rogers there. Hard to imagine what happened. Well, Rogers and Wallace involved in that tangle. Brett is standing by with Shane Wallace's crew chief. Well, Darren Shaw, your car came in. You had a chance to look at it. Any damage at all? No, nah, it's not bad at all. Disappointed. I mean, Clayton's the champion. He jumps the start on us. They don't black flag him. Then we're clearly inside of him. I guess his radio's broken his car because the spotter would definitely have to tell him the car's inside here at Bristol. He hit pretty hard here usually. So maybe his radio's broke. He might need to come in and work on his radio. That's kind of what I think. All right, we'll have to check that one out. Now, yeah, Darren Shaw obviously not very happy. Here's another look. Here's Wallace going to the inside in one. Rick, from a spotter's view, you, he's at the bumper when they get to the start-finish line. When they go off in the corner, there it is so fast, it's hard to key up and let him know that he's looking inside, and I think maybe just a communication gap in there. Well, let's hear from Clay Rogers' crew chief, get his thoughts on the incident. Blake Bainbridge here helping out on Clay Rogers. What did Clay say about the little incident here already? Well, it was kind of a miscommunication. His radio was real staticky, and they just, um, they didn't really know he was there. And then when he knew he was there, it was a little bit too late, so. But it gave us a chance to come down, put tires on, make adjustments, and um, I just told him to just take care of your stuff right here. I think we'll be okay. Well, we shall see. Clay Rogers will have to restart pretty deep in the field as we get set to go racing tonight here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Restart upcoming, first caution of the night on lap number five. Fogelman way back in the field now after stopping for two right sides. What's the tire rule here? Everybody took advantage of this caution. They come in. Track position is what this race is all about. You have to change at least two. They thought they'd get their pit stop out of the way. Everybody that I talked to up and down pit road said, look, first caution, we're coming to get our pit stop out of the way. We'll start in the back and work our way to the front. And Butler the third will have his work cut out for him as well in the Aaron's Dream Machine. Now, this race is only about 80 miles long, 150 laps on a track that's a little bigger than a half mile. One tank of fuel is enough tonight. Yeah, if you've got it packed full when they made this stop, they'll be in good shape. Well, our next race date on the Hooters Pro Cup Tour, the North Stars are at Madison, Wisconsin, the Miller Lite 250. It's Friday, September 9th at 7.30 p.m. Get your tickets, TV coverage, of course, the following week here on Speed. Lights out on the pace car, ready to dive in off turn four, ready to take the green flag. First restart of the night upcoming here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Michael Falk up through the gears. We're back underway to begin lap 13. One car, that's Joel Kaufman diving to the bottom. He wants to work his way by Jason Sarvis. Oh, and all the way down on that flat part. That almost catching that apron. You get really loose. Ooh. Stephen Wallace in the Food City dives the 66 next in line. Now here comes Curtis Davis taking a run for the lead. Let's jump on board with service. And that's how you make the pass. You get the run off the corner. Curtis Davis got all the way along Michael Falk. Michael Falk spotter said, look, inside, and he let him complete the pass. Joel Kaufman comes to third. Stephen Wallace moves that 66 to fourth. Now Wallace had a major win a short time ago at Michigan Speedway. Trying to win his first Hooters Pro Cup race here, and this is a track that he feels owes him one. He had a hard wreck here one year ago in his series debut. In the meantime, Michael Falk, George Brunholz in the third, going at it down the front straightaway. Falk was the restart leader, but he has backed up since then. This, though, a battle for position. Michael Rich right behind these two. Michael Rich showing up with a brand new car. This is a standard snout car they felt would be an advantage here. As well, most of these competitors brought a standard snout car to go around Bristol Motor Speedway. Georgie Brown holds it. Whoa, we got a spin. Oh, trouble. Joel Kaufman, Stephen Wallace on the backside. Rich scatters. And lots of cars involved. Bobby Gill is there. Ken Butler, the third involved in that one. Shane Huffman got in with a little bit. And we are under caution for the second time tonight on lap number 18. So Ken Butler the third, 
sideways it into the wall on the backside. Huffman pulls away. Mark McFarland pulls away. But Shane Wallace, the pole sitter, and the 44 of Joel Kaufman heavily involved in that incident. Kaufman supercuts car with a big amount of damage. Here's a look from Butler's machine. You can see the two cars having contact way ahead of them, and then all oh, heck breaks loose. Looks like Billy Bigley might have tapped Butler there. He comes to a stop against the outside wall. Kirk Leone rolls by. Shane Wallace, who started on the pole here tonight, heavy damage to the nose of the Wallace Motorsports Ford. Chain is unbuckling. The window nets down. Bill Kaufman's car with heavy damage as well. Lots to tell you about. We'll have some replays and sort it out next. Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway. Coverage of the Food City 150. Lots of cars sustaining heavy damage in a big backstretch incident. Bill Kaufman's 44 up on the hook. Bobby Gill in the USG Sheet Rock 06. Brand new piece for him tonight. He was fast in qualifying, and he was caught up in the middle of it. Here's another look. Stephen Wallace there in the Food City 66 car. He had Kaufman bump coming out of two. It looked like Joel Kaufman might have turned down on him. Yeah, you know, Stephen Wallace, in all fairness, I think he had that position. He was making a good run off the corner. Remember how fast you're going here. That momentum will carry you, but I think he had the shot underneath Joel Kaufman. Kaufman had himself up a little bit in the middle of the corner. A super cuts Pontiac of Kaufman. A hard shot into the outside wall. Heavy, heavy damage to the 44. Wallace's car sustaining damage. Daniel Johnson gets caught up. There's Bobby Gill getting caught in it. Brandon Collins there earlier. There's Shane Wallace. That's where he took the lick on the outside of the racetrack with Ken Butler. There's Danny O'Quinn in the Energy Fizz 02 getting involved in it as well. He taps Gill. Shane Huffman, the 81 car, last year's winner, sustains damage too. Let's get it down to pit road. Stephen Cox. The 0-1 car of Wayne Willard will come down pit row with a little bit of damage on the right side of that car. They're going to take it over there and work on the front right tire and see if they can get that change. But right now, the jack is just giving them fits. It's taken them a long time at a place where track position is so absolutely critical to get the right side of this car up in the air. So they straighten out a little bit of sheet metal, get those right side tires changed, and now they will decide to make it a full four-tire stop. So Wayne Willard stands by looking to tie his fantastic start to this year where he started fourth on the outside of row number two at USA International Speedway in the very first race of the year. Now he finally gets out this very, very slow pit road and Wayne Willard heads back out. We also have the 66 car of Steve Wallace and of course Rick, he was involved in this as well. They also have a little bit of damage, not enough to amount to anything. He'll head back out very quickly with fresh right side rubber as well. Shane Huffman is in. You can see him working on the right rear of that car, trying to get the sheet metal pulled away from the tires. Boy, for the guy who won this race a year ago, certainly not the way he wanted this race to start today. Just 19 laps in to be in the pits, having his team bang on some sheet metal to try to get that car back to some semblance of order so they could try to get it back to the front. Oh, we heard a comment earlier, Scott, about how aerodynamics weren't very important. This is a pretty fast place. I think you want your sheet metal as straight as possible. 11 cars involved in this. Ken Butler back on the racetrack in the 99, the Aaron's car. He's bringing that car down to pit road. The crew will go to work there. And there we get a look at Brandon Collins in the 43. He's lost the right front fender off that Chevrolet. So a lot of damage. Team's still working. The Kim Knock Ford bunch hard at work on the 06 of Bobby Gill. What about Shane Wallace? Back to Brett. Shane Wallace, what happened out there? Uh, the first three laps, I mean, I let Clay won the lead a lap. He kind of pitched me down to go in the one, so I let him go, and I went to pass him, and his, his spotter called inside, and Clay just wants to drive me dirty. It's about the fifth time this year he's done it to me, so uh, I don't know. I gave him a chance to lead his lap, went and tried to go back by him cleanly. He wanted to run me on the apron. That's why we crashed. You can't put a car on the apron here. Uh, I mean, we ended up, we still come out of the fifth or something like that, come down pit road. We probably wouldn't have pitted that early if we were leading, so we followed those guys down pit road, and we had a lot of slower cars ahead of us. And it's one, like I said, it's one of those Bristol deals. I'm glad I can say it now. Not really, but what are you going to do? We got a torp race car. We'll fix it. We'll go to Lake, and we'll, we'll lay it to them again. All right, try to keep a positive attitude in a very disappointing night. A product of your environment. A lot of adrenaline still running through him. You can hear from Bristol Motor Speedway. Plenty of frustration as well. We'll be back at Bristol. Back at Bristol, field realigning for our second restart of the night. Ivory Benjamin, Scott Sutherland alongside Stephen Cox, Brett McMillan on pit road. Curtis Davis will have the restart pole in the 68th. 
One driver who was hoping to lead the show tonight is standing by with Brett. Boy, Joel Kaufman, what happened out there? I don't know. I mean, we're just trying to survive there for a while. Um, that's the number one, number one key to this place. And, and uh, got a little tight down in one and two. Found myself a groove up in the racetrack. And next thing I know, I just got wild drove into the side. You know, uh, I know Steven was behind me. I don't know exactly what happened. But I don't really want to comment on what happened until I see something. But uh, not very happy with the way everything shook out. I uh, got a junk race car. And, and uh, I was here to make some laps tonight to get some experience for the Bush race on Friday. And it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So uh, just like to see what happened. Long way to come. Disappointing night for Joel Coffin. I've been a huge Joel Coffin fan since that young man has started here in the Hooters Pro Cup Series. I think he's an excellent race car driver. But he pointed out one thing. I let my car drift up just a little bit in the middle of the corner. You open the hole a little bit, they'll take advantage of it. And I think that's what happened between him and Stephen Wallace. Jumping on board here, Jay Fogelman, the Lucas Oil 22. He'll restart back in 17th spot. Safety car dives in. And the thing is, is all those guys that came to pit road, the front running cars, were all involved in that accident with the exception of Clay Rogers. Remember, he had to spend a lot of time on pit road. He's in the back of the field, wasn't involved in that wreck. Green is in the air. Curtis Davis leads him down into the corner. He is the restart leader in front of Jason Sarvis and Michael Falk up onto the backstretch now. A lot of drivers 11 involved. A lot of cars being repaired for ninth. Here's Randy Gentry to the inside. Randy Gentry had a fantastic run here last year. Right behind them is Billy Bigley Jr. and the 34 car of Mike Herman. At 77 is young Caleb Holman. He's from Abingdon, Virginia. Bigley out of Florida. The Peerless Woodworking 25 in 11th. And in front of Mike Herman, the Fireside 34. You've got to run so close together here at speed at Bristol. And the track is normally quite slick. That, that You know, the slightest bobble, you're going to have cars going around all night. Well, and it's just a little bit of a bobble along with a little help from their fellow competitor really accentuates that. You, but here's how it is. You run down in here, you're going to try to stay on that yellow line. You might let the car drift up just a little bit in the middle, but you get a good run off the corner. You want to try to bust underneath that guy to get the pass. Jason Sarvis running second. Trying to take the lead away from Curtis Davis in the 68. Falk runs third. When you were riding along with Jason Sarvis, did it feel like that wall was coming at you in the oh, yeah. area when you come on the straightaway? Well, they put the safer barriers in here at Bristol at the behest of NASCAR a year or so ago. And that's made a narrow racetrack even more narrow because it took a foot and a half or so away on the top side. A little further back, Bill Manfield, Toby Porter in the 13. There's the 40 car of Chase Pistoni, the Metrolina Expo Ford, and John Sarpacone in the 88, all battling for position. Porter now 25th. He didn't qualify well either. He's trying to pick his way through the front around Bobby Joe Woodley. And you watch Saprocone get up in that second groove, the back end of the car, wanting to get a little bit loose. You are hauling the mail here, and you just don't want to have a loose race car. Bobby Gill back on the racetrack. The Kim Knock Ford losing its nose sheet metal in that backstretch incident a couple of moments ago. This front holds a in the 20. Fourth spot for the young driver. Lap traffic is already a factor here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And lap traffic is a huge factor at Bristol. You may be a half second to a second faster, you'll catch the guy, and you can't pass him, and everybody's going to bunch up behind you. That, that's when all the serious wrecks happen. you just got to take your time and be patient. Now, Gil, with that brand-new 06, they had to cut the front sheet metal off. And aerodynamics at this place, important enough, you've got to think Gil is going to be off the pace with the uh, frame just kind of hanging out there in the engine. Nothing to deflect the wind off the nose of the 06 tonight. I don't think Gil will be a fact. Uh, you're, you're talking about downforce. You've got to have downforce in order to make these cars turn, and that's what they do rely on, the aerodynamic packages. This is a speedway as such. Hosel, Falk, and Michael Rich. Remember, we talked to Rich at the top of the broadcast on board with Bart Hosel here. Michael Rich started back in 20th. He's taken advantage of the two incidents. He's moved up nicely here in the first 37 laps. Well, he hasn't made his pit stop. He will have to come to pit road and put his tires on and put the fuel in the car. You can see a little bit of damage in the left rear corner of that Jack Bruce car. But he's been on a roll here lately. He thinks that he's got something for him here tonight. Michael Rich back in fifth, watching Brun Hosel and Falk battle for third. Next in line, page back a little bit. Here's Brun Hosel. Took a look inside the 53 of Michael Falk. That's a move going into the corner that you're tempted to make as a driver, but generally it does not pay off because there's usually contact when you try that. Now, Brun Hosel did the right thing. He backed up just a little bit, tried to get a good run off the corner and bust up underneath. If he can get that run on Michael Falk, he has to give way before they give him the next corner. Getting around Sarper going in the 88. Guard line back there is the 01. 
101 North. That's the car of Stacy Courier, West Davis, the crew chief. Here's Spock in third. Ron Holzel fourth. There's Rich. And here comes Courier, a little loose that time. Leone in the 52. He started way back at the tail of the field. He had Matt Carter there in the LCT car, the 03, trying to rumble up through the pack. There in front of Randy Gentry, Billy Bigley in the 25 car. And Andrew Rogers in the Terminator 18. 42 laps up on the board, running order at the top of your screen, courtesy of Aarons. Mike Herman Jr. in the 34. Ian Jeff Agnew. Agnew's up to 12th now. He's gained seven spots already. Meantime, that battle for third rages. Falk in the 53. Ron Holzel in the 20. One car off the pace, it's Gill. And Bill Mantle nearly gets run over on the bottom as well. Jason Sarvis continues to lead. We're early in the game here at Bristol. Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway. On board with Georgie Ron Holzel the third in the Tucson Ford. Right up behind Michael Falk. Battling for positions in the top five. One of the best runs we've seen from these two drivers. Well, George Brown also Jr. has come on really, really well late in this year. And Michael Falk got a good crew chief. He should be able to run good. Falk is third. Ron Holzel is fourth. Michael Rich out of 20th starting spot. Up to fifth here before 50 laps go on the board. Down into the corner, you get a sense of just how high these cliffs are here at Bristol. 36 degrees of bank in the corner. Here's Ron Holzel swinging the 20 car to the bottom. That's how you make the pass at Bristol Motor Speedway. Left the door open. Michael Rich goes under him. Stacey Perrier in the 0-1 trying to get up in there as well. And Perrier goes by. So Falk clearly was holding this line of traffic up. Kirk Leon in the 52 right in the mix. He's up in seventh. He started way at the back of the pack tonight. He's with Matt Carter there and Randy Gentry. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Billy Bigley is tenth. And you'll watch these guys try to make their pass. They'll drift up in the corner just a little bit in the middle, turn it and get in the gas and just barely catch that apron off the exit of the corner. That's where you get all your speed. Leone's 52. Matt Carter in the LCT machine, the 03, battling for a spot back there. Here comes Jeff Agnew. Now he started 19th. He was up to 11th. He's going for 10th. He's gotten by Bigley to pick that spot up. Leone oh, going oh, right oh. in there on the back bumper of the 53 car. I'm not sure you want to do that. Everybody going high to get around Bill Mantle's 30 and put him another lap down. Carter to the high side. Gentry goes up the hill. He's ninth. There's Agnew 10th in front of the 25 of Bigley. Boy, Jeff Agnew's been on a hot streak of late in that NGA 73 car. Former national champion here. Well, it was only just a few days ago. He won at Ileana, but he was so sick that could barely get him out of the race car. And it was just, I'm tickled to death just to see him here. Agnew moves around the 19. So Jeff Agnew in that Hooters golf tour car headed to the front tonight at Bristol. Pretty much a home race for Agnew from uh, not very far up the road in Virginia. Bobby Gill back up on the racetrack in the heavily damaged 06. Jason Sarvis wheels by him. Sarvis in the naturally fresh Ford. His best run all season by far, leading this race. And, and up until this point, Myrtle Beach was kind of his high point, and he ended up crashing. Oh, oh. John Sepricone has spun and whacked the wall a ton. He has shortened up that 88 car, and here comes Brunt Holzel. He has gotten into, wow, he has knocked the rear end out from under the Tucson Ford. Those two cars evidently tangled up the racetrack, and we're under caution for the third time tonight. So Sepricone in the Montgomery Motor Speedway 88 car. Heavy, heavy damage to that race car. And Georgie Brunholzel, who was running so well up in the top five, he has smacked the wall a ton. Well, there's wow. No, there's no such thing as just a fender bender at Bristol Motor Speedway. This, this is the kind of thing that happens as it starts out very innocent and ends up a, a huge problem. Both drivers dropping the window net, so they are okay. Sepricone will climb out. Bristol safety crew among the best in the business right there to help both drivers. Here comes Georgie Brunholzel. The other thing to keep in mind here, you know, it is a short track, but with these banks, you're lapping this place at a buck 20 average on a qualifying lap. When you hit, you do hit hard, even though there are safer barriers all around. Let's have another look at what happened. Stephen Wallace right up behind the 8-8. Looks like he got into the back deck lid of Sarpico. Uh, that was definitely contact, and that was on the middle of the straightaway, or, you know, coming up off the corner onto the straightaway, making contact with the back, sending Sarpico around. 
One more look at it as they come to the corner. Uh, uh, Brett Hosel in a separate incident. He cut down a right front tire, it appeared. Yeah, you saw the right front fall down. You saw the sparks come out from underneath the car. You get another look. And that was a vicious hit into the wall. Safer barrier is a great idea. They certainly cushioned the blow for Georgie Brett Hosel. Let's ride in the Tucson 4. Oh, you, you can heard hear it. it. You felt it. There was nothing he could do but ride it out. Doesn't take long to get up the bank and hit the wall at these speeds at a place like this. And Sarfrico looked as though Stephen Wallace just got to him very quickly. There was contact on the straightaway and the 88 car hard into the wall. Eddie O'Quinn 0-2 also down there. So under caution for the third time tonight. Michael Rich has damage on the 28 car. The Jackaroo meat sauce is Ford. And Bobby Gill from an earlier incident, the 0-6 out there just making laps. And that's Curtis Davis. They're all dropping down to come down pit road. Well, there's the championship race schedule coming up this fall. The five race series to settle the title fight at Jennerstown in September. Mansfield in Myrtle Beach will wrap things up, of course, at USA in Lakeland, Florida at the end of the month of November. $200,000 up for grabs for the national champion in the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Stock Car Series. Good night for Stacey Perrier and the Strutmaster 01 started 30th. He will be fourth on the restart, and he seems to be coming through the field pretty quickly. Let's get a word with his crew chief, Wes Davis, downstairs to pit road. Wes Davis in charge of the 01 car. Tell us what Stacy did right to get this thing up front. We just worked really hard all day. I mean, we didn't really do anything special to it. We just changed two to the left side tires and put it back on track, and that was it. That shows you how critical track position is. Tell me how those BF Goodrich tires are holding up now. Holding up real well. Real well. We haven't had any problems with them at all. Is Stacy talking to you much about the race car? No, he hadn't said a whole lot. He said it was pretty good. So we'll just see. You couldn't have asked for much more. No, not after today. <laughs> No, not at all. Well, when the driver's quiet on the radio, that usually means good things are starting to happen on the racetrack. Here's Curtis Davis. He's led some laps tonight. He's going to make his pit stop. Now he's in front of you, Brett. And into the pits comes Curtis Davis, run of the Bush Series this year. Decided to run at Bristol. One win in this series back in 2003. He's got Bill Davis's truck team pitting him here tonight. They're on the right side of the car. They're going to loosen that car up a little bit because it's been very, very tight. They're going to make it a four-tire change and also give them a chassis adjustment on the left side as well. Left side tire is off. Good practice for this Bill Davis truck team. You know what? The more practice, the better, and he's away. Well, it's a doubleheader for those boys tonight because the Craftsman trucks run after the Hooters Pro Cup event here at Bristol Motor Speedway. So some service for a couple of cars. Get your tires early. You don't give up much track position under caution here, and you'll be on fresh rubber late in the going. Jason Sarvis will be the restart pole sitter. He's led a bunch of laps here so far in Haskell Willingham's four. Back with more of the Food City 150 in just a moment. Welcome back to a big house on hand at Bristol Motor Speedway. Coverage of the Food City 150 presented by Naturally Fresh. The USAR Hooters Pro Cup South Tour, the 12th race of 2005. I'm Rick Benjamin, Scott Sutherland alongside. Next up on TV, the Lucas Oil 250 from USA International next Saturday night right here. Hope you can join us for our coverage of the season finale, the regular season wrap-up for the South Tour. And then the five races, best of the North, best of the South, to battle to settle the 2005 Hooters Pro Cup National Champion. Lead lap cars will restart on the high side. Jason Sarvis will lead us back to green. Sarvis has been very, very strong. Clayton Rogers, Shane Huffman, some of the heavy hitters still trying to pick their way up through the field. And Stacey Furrier now will restart right behind Sarvis. With Scott Sutherland, I'm Rick Benjamin, Brett McMillan, and Stephen Cox on Pit Road for us. Well, you brought it up earlier, Haskell Willingham, the owner, the car owner of the 16 car, a couple weeks ago was ready to throw in the towel. I'm glad he didn't yet because they're having a great run here tonight. Matt Carter will line up third in front of Kirk Leone. Left cars, Bobby Joe Woodley and Brandon Collins down on the bottom. Green flag back in the air to begin lap 68 of 150 tonight at Bristol. And Sarvis opens up three car lengths over per year. Then comes Matt Carter, having a real good run here tonight as well. Kirk Leone and Jeff Agnew running fifth. Agnew has been a rocket tonight from 19th. He's been helped by a couple of cautions. A lot of cars have been behind the wall for varying lengths of time because of several incidents we've had here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Up front, though, the 16 of Sarvis per year in that 01 North. Good nose-to-tail battle, and here comes Matt Carter. Now, that's the fastest we've seen that 03 car in quite some time. Yeah, and he's got a real good run going here tonight. 
Just a little bit high there in a little in the corner. He's got to get down on that yellow line. Don't want to leave that door open. Clayton Rogers has gone from the rear and he's caught this front group. His car is extremely fast. Rogers in sixth position. Remember, he was on the outside pole here tonight. Got caught up in a lap five tangle with Shane Wallace, the pole sitter. Came to pin road, long pit stop. But the several restarts we've had have allowed him to catch back up to the leaders. I think that long pit stop was a blessing in disguise. You know, he was, he was probably very ecstatic about Watts taking so long. They made some adjustments. But you know what? That kept him from being in that big wreck that everybody else was involved with. Well, track position can work for you a couple of ways. One is helping you stay in touch with the leaders. The other is giving you some space from the big incident, depending on the speed run. Carter, Kirk, Leoma, top on board with our leader. Jason Sarvis in lap traffic. Oh, he just sneaks by Bobby Joe Worthy. Boy, you approach cars quickly here. Yeah, but I want to hear the engine. Listen to it where he picks up the gas. Middle of the corner. Way before the middle of the corner. You drive off in, drive it in really hard, and pick it up before you even get to the middle. And we're closing down on halfway. Here comes Sarvis. He's got Perrier behind him, lapping by Manful, and there are the cross flag. Jason Sarvis wins the $1,000 Lucas Oil halfway leader bonus. With like 32 laps, he's emerged on the other side of four lead changes. To Brad McMillan. Out of 68 of Curtis Davis back in. This time, the hood is up, and that's never a good thing when the hood goes up. Team looking up under there. Curtis Davis actually gesturing out the window, trying to direct the team. A shrug to the crew chief. Davis's guys from the Crafts and Truck Series team going around the car trying to figure out what's going wrong. Meantime, Clay Rogers seeing a lot of things go right for him. He's right in the thick of this battle for fourth with Kirk Leone there and Jeff Agnew. Agnew to the bottom. He takes a look. Leone covers the spot in that 52. And Agnew and Rogers are really rolling right up behind him. Coming up on the wounded car of Andrew Rogers, the Turbidor 18 caught up in one of those earlier incidents. They've taken all the front sheet metal off of it now. And Rogers will move to the bottom of the racetrack. Matt Carter tagging out of the back end of Stacey Perrier's machine. Those are the top three. Going around DJ Kennington on the outside. That's really going to take your time, but yet those guys are closing in on you. Outside's a little bit slippery. Carter in the LCT machine. Great run for him. Up to third now and putting some pressure on Perrier. Kennington stays low and out of the way. Laps go by in a hurry. You think what? you're a long ways to the end, but you can run 75 laps off in a hurry here. So I know these guys are thinking about, I just want to be patient, take care of my car. But at some point in time, you've got to start making your move. Well, as often as things can happen here in Bristol, you've got to be thinking, hey, I, I need to take care of my stuff, get as close to the end as I possibly can, and then try to make a move. Agnew, though, didn't have that luxury. Starting way back in the 10th row tonight in that 73 car, he has been picking his way up through the field, showing his veteran skills. He stayed out of trouble all night long, and now he's working on Kirk Leon. And I think he's a little bit quicker than Leon. He just can't get the move. Wow, that was a move. Didn't have enough bite as he tried to point the 73 to the bottom and get by Leon. And now here comes Rogers up on the outside. DJ Kennington. In the 17, one of the Kaskar stars from north of the border. Up front, meantime, lap traffic a factor for Jason Sarvis now. And that's a closing speed that the leader will have. You'll close in so fast on the left over cars that you really have to check up hard, and that's what those guys will gain on you quickly. 77 is Caleb Holman, Adam to Virginia, young driver. Jason Sarvis, the veteran, trying to work his way by. Bill Mantle pulls down off the hills. Leader still stuck there behind Holman. Sarvis will try an outside look this time. Hard to pass on the outside in the corners. And you've really got to have a good run. And that guy, he's still on the tail end of the lead lap. He's not a lap down yet, so he's trying to stay on the lead lap. Now he opened the door. Jason Sarvis should go through. Sarvis per year. And the third place car all in the mix. Carter right there in the 03. Here comes Perrier now. He'll get behind Holman. 
to get alongside him. And you got to say, Stacy Perry was very patient, yeah. waiting for that to all happen in front of him because he could have stuck his nose in and took out all three of them guys. Oh, Kirk Leon loses the handle in the 52. The Kirk Motorsports Ford up into the wall. Field scatters around him. No secondary contact on Leon's car, and that's a good thing. He was a sitting duck there in the middle of the banking, but fortunately, not a lot of traffic around him. He was fourth when he lost it. Right here, Clay Rogers going down, thinks he has the inside ah. going into the corner. A little bit of contact, and around Leon goes. A classic Bristol incident. You try to make a pass going into the corner. You slip up the racetrack a few inches. It's such close quarters racing here. It doesn't take much at these speeds to spin you out. Only a touch, and you saw it as they went down into the corner. Clay Rogers thinking that Kurt Leon was going to give him the position. The door closed in a hurry. On board here with Jay Fogelman. There's Ken Butler's car. Oh, There's oh, Leon. Oh, Fogelman oh. just with enough room to sneak by on the high side. This will send a lot of cars, including the leader Sarvis, to pit road now. 60 laps to go here tonight. And Sarvis brings the naturally fresh foods car to the attention of his crew. And there is Shane Huffman in the 81. Now, we haven't heard much from Super Shane in a while. Michael Ritchie was up in the top five, and Toby Porter. They will make late stops here with less than 60 to go. Let's get it downstairs. Jason Sarvis gives up the lead to make his mandatory pit stop. In he comes. They've got around to the right side of that car. This is a stop he had to make. At least two tires. They're putting enough fuel in to get him the rest of the way. They're also to give him a chassis adjustment as well. A little slow getting that done. But finally, they're pitting on the right side. They're coming around the left side. They're going to make this a four-tire change for Jason Sarvis. Three times this year, he has finished in the top ten, including in two of the last three races. I tell you, this team really seems to be coming on here. A lot of trouble on the left front. Finally, he's away. So Sarvis with a slow stop. He will give up a lot of track position. He'll have his work cut out for him when we go green again here at Bristol. Meantime, let's head to the other side of pit road. The 52 S car of Kirk Leone comes down pit row, and he has a lot of body damage on the rear end of this race car that they're going to have to work with. The very first thing they do is work with the fuel system because they have to get that fuel nozzle to fit in order just to put in one can of fuel. That's probably all they need to go the distance. Now they have fresh right side rubber. Kirk will throw the water out and take on left side rubber. It looks to be a reasonably good stop, all things considered, except for the left rear tire. Everything else was done on time, Rick, but the problems on the left rear with the bodywork have held him up, and Kirk Leone was knocking on the door for the top five. He heads back out. Well, there's a couple things here. With the back end being knocked down like that, this air on the spoiler is not going to be very good. He's not in points. I would advise go ahead and park that baby for tonight. Some of the great crowd on hand to enjoy the Hooters Pro Cup Series at Bristol. We'll be back with more. You know, guys, Bristol often is referred to as one of the toughest seats to get in this sport. Well, I found one tougher. Right here on the Aaron's deck. Yeah, they were giving away tickets for fans to come sit in these wonderful Barco loungers. Don't tell Steven about this, okay? Great view for the restart, I would say. Well, all I would need is a cocktail meal alongside it with some chicken wings. I'd be right at home up there. <laughs> Got a Hooters on the road. Riding with Jay Fogelman, he's right up behind Mark McFarland, getting closer to the front as we prepare for a restart here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Lap cars are at the bottom. Stacy Furrier will lead him to green this time in front of Matt Carter. Clay Rogers, who started second, he's back up to third. After that lap five tangle, Agnew restarts fourth. Three to go till we hit 100 laps on the board. We're back underway. Well, Stacy Purrier is leading the, re the race right now. But remember, in qualifying, when the car was smoking, they had a line come loose, had to start in the rear of the field all the way to the lead. Speaking of headed to the front, Clay Rogers just blows by Carter for second. Here comes Agnew. We know Agnew's got a fast hot rod tonight, and he brings the Hooters car to third. Randy Gentry on the move in the 19, the Harrison'sWorkwear.com entry. 
And here comes Mark McFarland. Boy, Matt Carter's just getting freight trained up on the high side there. Well, well, he's hung on the outside, and he wants to be able to get. Now he can get down to the bottom. And you know what? He didn't want to do the bad thing. He just turned down in front of somebody. He waited till the line was clear. Get back in line. And, oh, oh, trouble. No. Jay Fogelman gets tapped off the corner. Wrinkles up the front end of the Lucas Oil Ford. That'll bring out the yellow. Our fifth caution of the night with 49 laps to go. Fogelman will pop it in gear and drive it home. But you can see the trail of fluid. He's broken the radiator out of the 22. Now, you don't want to run it very long because not only is it ah. water, but he's losing the oil. Oh, he spins in his own fluid. And that will just add to the mess here at Bristol Motor Speedway. There it is. Off of two, he was behind in front of Ken Butler, the third of the 99. Can't tell for sure if there was contact or if that was more or less a typical Bristol incident. Looked like part of a brake rotor maybe flying out from under the car there. I saw spring cups and everything else. You want to think there's a little bit of contact coming up off the corner, trying to go around a lap car, and man, it, that's all it takes at Bristol Motor Speedway. So Fogelman, who was trying to make his way to the front in that number 22, the Black's Tire Service, Lucas Oil Ford. Let's ride with Butler here. enough of a bunt in the back end to turn the 22 around. Drive with Jay. Just along for the ride at that point in a place like this. Now Jay Fogelman with the ball cap on, the helmet and the Hans device off. He says thanks anyway, but I'm fine, and he's going to jog out to the track and uh, give Ken Butler the third the uh, your number one signal. And Jay Fogelman frustrated at what's happened tonight. Ken Butler, who qualified fourth, by far his best outing of the season. He has been involved in a couple of altercations, as you can see from the pitch sheet metal on that Chevrolet. So Ken Butler the third will survive to fight another day. Fogelman will go behind the wall. We'll be back with more at Bristol. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, we've got Sutherland. I'm Rick Benjamin under caution for this incident. The 22 of Jake Fogelman turned by the 99 of Ken Butler. Fogelman broke the radiator and more out of the 22 car. Even though he drove it away, he's done for the night. Downstairs to Steven. Well, believe it or not, Rick, he came out with a smile on his face. Not an easy trick after what Jay's been through. Tell me what happened. Well, I don't know. I was just, you know, you have to smile the way we ran. We finally got this thing turned around. Car ran good all day. and. Just racing a lap car on the outside, and you know, we got a lot of young drivers that are making a name for themselves in this series, and we're going through here. And sometimes they get impatient, it just happens, you know. I got impatient when I was young, and I'll still get impatient now. And it just cost us bad tonight, but it's had a good car. I was just so glad for Ricky and Mike and myself that we were actually running good, Lucas Oil. And we're about to get this thing turned around. We're going to go to Lakeland and test this week, and we're going to get this race team turned around, I promise you. Jay is just fine, and we now go north to check in on the main stretch with Brett. The 99 of Ken Butler has come in to the stop here, and his crew had just spent a long time debating with USAR officials about whether or not he should be penalized for rough driving. What they're doing here is they've put the original rights back on the car and new left. They only changed two tires during their first stop, and now they're being warned to come back around. It looks like they lost a lug nut or had a loose lug nut on the right front. So they've come, they've tightened that back up again, and he'll go back on the track, but have to go back to the tail end of the longest line. Wow, tough break indeed for Ken Butler. Another look at the incident. Vogelman around a lapped car, maybe backed out of the gas there. Well, what happens is he's trying to work that lap car, and that really narrows up when you come up off the corner. Ken Butler is just trying to keep his car in that momentum. He's in that rhythm, and that's what happens. You'll run into the guy in front of you. Fans certainly enjoying it, getting their money's worth tonight. The Hooters Pro Cup Series at Bristol. We'll be back. We are back at Bristol Motor Speedway, a packed garage area tonight, a doubleheader. Hooters Pro Cup Series a little later, the NASCAR Craftsman Trucks. Preparing for another restart. Field up on the backstretch, Stacy Purrier will bring him around to the green. Clayton Rogers will line up in second spot. Jeff Agnew restarts third. Of these three, who do you like, Scott? Who's got the fastest car? Well, you got to say uh, Clay Rogers really looks good. Remember, he was leading early, had to go clear to the end of the field, made a couple changes. But I also like Jeff Agnew's car. His car looks really fast on a longer run. But we need to get a longer run. Yeah. It's been a series of short bursts tonight. Several cautions already here at Bristol Motor Speedway. 
Coming up, green flag in the air to begin lap 110, 40 to go as they make it around this half mile high bank oval. Four year takes off and Rogers drives right in behind him. Here's Clay Rogers. Who did the smart thing, backed out of it. He didn't quite have his right front fender alongside of uh, Stacy Perrier, so he backed out of it, let him go. You know, it looks like they've got a big gap. They'll get a two, three car length gap, but all of a sudden it'll close in one corner. That's how much faster one car can be off one corner. Top three, though, pulling away per year, and that's 0-1, the leader, the Schaefer's Oil, 44, Rogers second. The Hooters NGA Golf Tour 73 of the veteran Agnew runs third. Tight racing here at Bristol. Per year. Rogers right behind him. Perrier starting to slip a little bit in the corners. Yeah, I think his car's still a little bit free. When he goes down off in the corners, I've seen him get a, the car will move up. But I think the fact that he's loose, he's got to walk the car up just to catch it. And he's driving the wheels out right now. But there's a move. Rogers to the bottom. Clay Rogers wants to oh, take oh, off. Oh, oh. Perrier goes up. They touch. That opens up the door, and Rogers takes the lead. Agnew powers to second in the 73. Lead change at Bristol. Stacy Perrier should have lost that car. I don't know how he saved it. Maybe the nudge helped him because he was loose and sideways, and I, it, it caught. I don't know how. Is this one of those places, if that happens to you, you want to keep your foot in it as we watch for sixth? Billy Bigley to the inside of Wayne Willard. There's Rick Markle back there in the 60 car. To answer your question, yes. It starts going sideways, pick the gas up. It caught tracks, and he drove off. This is a great battle. Wayne Willard, rookie contender, the Bowen Home Chevrolet. Rick Markle running eighth right now. Started 24th in that car out of Mooresville, North Carolina. Just a third time out for that team. And how about the 81 of Shane Huffman? Still a lap down, trying to roll to the front and get a lap back. Here's Mark McFarland now with Randy Gentry. Gentry hanging on to fourth with McFarland pressuring him. New paint scheme on the wind fuel 32 tonight. And lap by Manful yet again. Bobby Joe Woodley there in the 98, same situation. He stays down out of harm's way. Gentry running the wheels off that 19, but here's McFarland. Ooh, that was close. Gentry able to get back to the bottom and close the door on the 32. And caution, everybody backs out of it. Trouble on the racetrack, Kirk Leone in the 52. Our sixth yellow of the night looks like Leon backed into the wall and lost a lot of the rear bodywork off that car. Second or third time tonight, Leon's been in the soup. Nose of the car wrinkled up. Leon's been fast at times this evening in the Kirko Motorsports car. Here's uh, another look at what happened. A little bit of contact. Looked as though he got roughed up going down into the corner. Is that Michael Falk back there? It is. Falk in the I 53. Leone drives the 52 car down off the banking, minus the rear bumper cap after the impact. Matt Carter was up at the top three earlier. He'll bring the LCT car to the attention of his crew. As we are inside 40 laps remaining here tonight, closing in on 30 to go. Matt Carter running back in 19th position. He will make a late stop. They'll go to the right side of the 03 car. A couple of fresh tires, but no fuel. But Brad McMillan, they think there may be another problem with that Ford Taurus. What's the story? And Matt Carter back in. They believe it's broken studs on the right front of that car as he dropped back with a great run going. And now just disappointed with the crew trying to get this car fixed and salvage a good finish. Well, they're examining the tire that came off the right front here for Matt Carter. They're not sure. They thought broken studs was the problem, but they're taking a look at it as Matt Carter had an outstanding run going, poised for a great finish today, but he's dropped back and uh, looks like they're going to have to just salvage the best thing they could possibly come up with here. Well, Kirk Leone's day has gone from bad to worse. He started out like a house on fire, worked his way as high as fourth or fifth position before he got caught up in an accident. You can see the damage on the left side of the car, also on the rear of the car, and now more difficulties with some possible body damage making metal rub into the left side BF Goodrich radials. That's what they're checking right now. They should send him right back out. He does have fuel. He does have fresh tires if these tires have not been too terribly damaged by the body work. Now they're going to go to the back of the race car try to tape it up as best they can but I'll tell you Kirk has lost so much position right now that he's just now struggling to try to go 150 laps if he can do that he'll be lucky well, I tell you from the looks of it he's not real lucky right now and without a rear spoiler on that car Rick I don't
back over to the Food City 150 presented by Naturally Fresh from Bristol Motor Speedway. It's the next to last regular season race for the Hooters Pro Cup South Tour Stars here in 2005. I'm Rick Benjamin, Scott Sutherland is alongside. And check our Lucas Oil race recap. Five laps on the board, and the top two starters got in within turn one. Shane Wallace tried to go inside play. Roger, big contact. Both cars damaged slightly, but they were able to continue in the chase. Lap 18, off of turn number two. Joel Kaufman and Stephen Wallace got together. Several other cars involved. Bobby Gill, 11 drivers in all, came to three. Ken Buckley the third, and the Aaron Green machine started in fourth spot tonight. He would get tapped from behind and go around. He and Billy Bigley got into it as they came off one of the corners here at Bristol earlier tonight. 43 laps are on the scoreboard. Curtis Davis was out in front. Jason Sarvis was running second in the naturally fresh food scored. Michael Fox slotted into third position. Now lap 53. Trying to get with Georgie Brunholzel. The Tucson car cuts down a right front tire hard into the outside concrete wall. The incidents at both ends of the racetrack on that particular occasion. Holton's car heavily damaged. He is okay if it does to the night. 75 laps up on the board. Timmy to halfway. Sarvis the leader over Stacey Furrier. Sarvis collects the halfway bonus tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway. Just past 50 to go on the back stretch. A tap sends Jay Fogelman to the inside wall. The Lucas Oil board, the Black Tire Service car heavily damaged. Fogelman frustrated. He was done for the night. Broken radiator and more. And here's a look at Fogelman's onboard. Got tapped from behind by the 99 car. Down into the infield retaining wall. Fogelman had nowhere to go. 22 loaded up prematurely. Lap 114. Up at the front of the pack, Clay Rogers, Jeff Agnew. Rogers able to scoop by and take the lead in turn three. And Clay Rogers, who started second tonight, he is your leader. That's your Lucas Oil race recap. The rookie Ken Bummer, the third, started in fourth tonight. He is still in the top 15. Heck, he's 12th right now as we show you our Miller Light when you run down. Michael Falk, Willard Wallace, and Bobby Joe Woodley. We'll be back. We are back at Bristol coming up on 25 laps to go. Lights out on the safety car. Shane Huffman right up alongside Clay Rogers trying to get his lap back now. And that's what he's been looking for, the opportunity to get up there on the inside and have that desired line going off into turn one. Remember, he cannot pass him before the start finish line, but he has an opportunity to get his lap back. Jeff Agnew will restart second. Stacey Purrier, Randy Gentry next in line. Lap cars at the bottom. Huffman a lap down. Here we go. 27 laps to go tonight. Rogers out drags Huffman. The 81 car slots in that one in front of Agnew. We'll see if Huffman's got anything here. He's been to pit road a couple of times with damage tonight. And he closes right in on Rogers. Now, if you're Rogers, you've got to let him go. Well, and I would, because you know he's on a pressure tire. He got a great restart. Go ahead and let him go. Get back in line. Don't let Jeff Agnew go. Get oh. 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 They're going to be making oh. contact, and Agnew will squirt through and grab the lead. Huffman. Rogers got into the back end of the 81, knocked the bumper cap off. Debris now on the speedway. We may well see another caution because the rear cover came off the 81 car and the yellow lights are on at Bristol. So the Knights Company's car racing hard. Huffman was to try to get his lap back. Contact because he slipped up the racetrack. Clay Rogers really had nowhere to go. Well, the thing is, is he could have just backed out. Let, let Shane Huffman go. He really has nothing to lose at that point. He's got a great race car. He can outrun these guys for 25 laps. Uh, just not a situation you want to be too involved with. This is your points leader, though, in the 81 car, Shane Huffman. He's doing everything he can to get back on the lead lap. Well, the safety car picks up Rogers again. Now the two tangled and let Agnew go by. I'm not sure if they got to the stripe to complete another lap. So USAR officials consulting the timing and scoring monitors to determine actually who will be the restart leader. Looks like Agnew will go in front of Rogers now. We are under caution. Here it is again. Huffman trying to get a lap back here on Rogers. Took him up the banking. Down into three. And the rear bumper cap uh, came off, and that started to slide. Sure it did. He lost all the downforce in the back of the car, and the back end of the car started going up into Clay Rogers. So Rogers, more or less, an innocent bystander in that incident here at Bristol. Are things falling into place again? Uh, yeah, you know, we're a little bit tight in traffic. We brought the oldest car we got in the shop. It's got a 2002 body on it. Jim said it won't turn a lick in traffic, but 
now that we got clean air, I think we're in good shape. Let's ride this thing out, see if we get it to the end. Jeff Agnew trying to win two races in five days. It's really unheard of, but he's got a shot here. We're back at Bristol Motor Speedway for Frank for yet another restart. This time, Jeff Agnew will be the restart full sitter. In that Hooters NGA Golf Tour Chevrolet, the 73 on the high side. Clay Rogers, Stacey Furrier, and Mark McFarland top four. Shane Huffman now with the end cap gone off the back end of the Knights 81 car. He'll restart alongside Agnew and again try to get his lap back, but he's got no spoiler on that car. He can't be working very well. I'm sitting here thinking about this. And there is no way I'm going to shift through the gears and go off into that. There's no way. Shane Huffman, if you can do it, you're a heck of a race car driver. Jeff Agnew, great opportunity here, though. Now on dirt, if he had a spoiler, the car might work a lot better without that body panel on there, but without that lip on the back deck, like, you've got to figure he is going to be hard press to keep that thing straight anywhere and off into turn one you can see Huffman taking it easy with that car he is the points leader doesn't want to make a mistake here at Bristol tonight Agnew and Rogers meantime jetting away from the field coming up on 20 laps to go well speaking of making a mistake that's what Jeff Agnew has to just go 20 more laps without a mistake and he's got a good race car but if he messes up just a little bit oh another tangle with 20 to go Chase Pistone gets up into the wall Ken Butler the third was right there looked as though they had made some contact and the caution waves again Metrolina Expo four to Pistone will climb up through the gears and back up onto the racetrack but they have wrinkled up what was a pretty straight race car before that incident well, there's a lot of wrinkles out here tonight. If you yeah. look through the field, there is nobody going to go home without a dent or, or a, a war somewhere on their race car. Another look at it as they come down into the corner. There is Pistoni in the 40. Butler behind him. Sure, there's the bump. And Pistoni had to check up just a little bit. Not so much for Michael Falk, but the lap car on the inside. Ken Butler, wham, into the back end of the car. Sends them both up to the wall. Now, is it a case of Butler having a much faster race car than he's used to here tonight? Another look. This is from a little deeper vantage point as we see the 40 go around. Butler seems to me may have more race car than he's used to driving. He's, he's got a heck of a race car here tonight. He's just going to have to learn that patience part of it. So difficult to do when you're just watching. But here's an opportunity. You go off into the corner and see how fast he closes. He really needs to be covering the brake at this point. Late in the race, you really got to be careful on these car on old time. And Butler performing in front of his team owner, Michael Waltrip here, of course, on next L Cup weekend. They've got a Bush Series entry and more. And the Aaron's team, that car is going to need a lot of work when this one is over tonight. Tony back underway. Jeff Agnew leads Rogers for a year. McFarland and Gentry with less than 20 to go. We'll be back. Lining up for yet another restart here at Bristol Motor Speedway. The USAR Hooters broke up south toward the Food City 150. I'm Rick Benjamin. Scott Sutherland is alongside. Brad McMillan and Stephen Cox have been very busy on both sides of pit road. Remember, at Bristol, you've got a pit road on the back stretch as well as on the front straightaway. And you've got to commit on the back side under caution and make it all the way around to the front. But that really hasn't been a factor. We've had enough caution periods. Everybody's had their pick of opportunities to stop and take tires. Fuel not an issue. Only 150 laps tonight. I think the, the choice so when I stopped and what position I put myself on the in the racetrack and where I, who I was around is what has gotten a lot of these race cars. Clay Rogers was dead all the way to the back that first time because they had a bad pit stop. But it ended up being the best thing for him because here he is second and maybe a little bit quicker than Jeff Agnew. Jeff Agnew just has to hold on for 17 more laps. We'll see what Agnew has in that three-year-old race car. You heard from Doug Weddle's crew chief a moment ago. Oldest car they have in the shop. Trying to win two in five days. Right behind him, a guy who hasn't been to victory lane at all this year. The defending national champion, Clay Rogers. A hungry dog chasing a porterhouse steak. Well, that's absolutely right. He's been been close so many times this year and here he is close again trying to close a deal Andy gentry on board jason sarvis now he led a lot of laps earlier led it halfway he is eighth trying to work his way back up through the field behind randy gentry right now well, you might have a great racehorse but it's so hard to get back up through traffic but here we go clay rogers working up behind agnew agnew in that hooters nga golf tour 73 car the orange and white machine Rogers in the Schaefer's Racing Oil 44. Clay Rogers with a run on Agnew. Alongside him, and Rogers takes the point. Well, Jeff Agnew knew he was there. They let him know on the radio that he is alongside you. He backed up out of it, let him go. 
Uh, is the race over, or can Agnew get another run on it? Sure looks like it, the way Rogers has driven away now from the second-place car. Stacey Furrier in the 0-1, trying to hold off Mark McFarland, who bounces through the low group and heads up high. It looked like McFarland was headed to the wall there for a moment. Yeah, he just barely caught the apron, and that sent that car shooting up the racetrack. Got to be real careful going into the corner there. And here comes Sarvis, blows by Gentry to pick off seventh position, but 12 laps are left here at Bristol. Not much time for Jason Sarvis to get the naturally fresh foods forward back in front. But his car's been fast all night here tonight, and they have got to be just ecstatic over that. Rogers, after moving to the point around Agnew, he has set sail, coming up 10 laps to go, 10 to go at Bristol. There's Matt Carter in the 03 with Jody Lavender. Haven't heard much from Lavender tonight. Didn't qualify well at all. Fighting for 14th. Back there's Chase Pistoni, who brought out the caution a few moments ago in the 40 car. He and Ken Butler together again on the racetrack. And Lavender has to back out of the gas. He's got a problem, and Michael Rich is up in the wall. Rich spins and backs it in with nine to go. It's our ninth caution of the night. And the Jackaroo meat sauces for it that was so strong earlier, Rich had come flying up through the field from his 20th starting spot. He may be finished for the night. So the caution waves. Here it is again, close quarters racing. Trying, Wayne Willard in there. Trying to go around DJ Kennington, a lap car, and a little bit, maybe a little contact, but, you know, it's so hard to tell. You can be so close, take the air off him, and the car will spin out, and it'll come right off from underneath you. So the caution back out, the safety car picks up Rogers, and we will get set for yet another restart with just a handful of laps to go here tonight. Now remember, there's a green-white checker rule in effect in Hooters Pro Cup competition. This race cannot end on a caution. What about fuel here? If we end up going overtime by a significant number of laps, some guys might get caught out. Well, you might be, because if you came down pit road on that lap five incident, you're gonna be really close on fuel. But the thing, Clay Rogers did not want to see this caution come out. He had a little bit of a gap between him and Jeff Agnew, and anything can happen on these restarts. Lights out on the safety car. The Hare Auto Group Chevrolet will lead the field through three and four. Rogers will take him up through the gears with a handful of laps to go. Agnew will restart in second. Courier is third. Fourth spot is McFarland. Now the 32 car has been showing some smoke the last few laps. Oh. He puts the bumper oh. run on Courier, who can't get going. We are back underway. furrier has got a problem. Here comes Bigley and Rick Markle. Oh, and Randy Gentry gets turned around in turn one. He's still Gentry going. He's still spins. Yeah, he's pointed in the right direction. We stay green for now. Toby Porter trying to get a run on him. Jody Lavender there in the H&R Block 84. And the caution is back out. The caution thrown on lap 147. Our 10th yellow of the night. Here's another look at it. Stacy Purrier started all that when he couldn't get started. Down in the corner, a little bump and run. Stephen Wallace gets up into Gentry and sends the 19 around. Stephen Wallace tried to go in on the apron. Watch it here. He'll catch that apron. You can't make the car hold on the apron. It slides up into Gentry and sends him around. So Stephen Wallace over exuberance on the part of the young rookie. Twirls Gentry and it causes our 10th yellow of the night. And Bill Mantle's car on pit road. Heavy damage to the right front corner of the 30. He may well be done for the night. We'll be back at Bristol. Looks like we might be playing some overtime tonight here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Preparing for yet another restart after the Randy Gentry spin. Rogers will be the restart pole sitter again in the Chambers Oil 44. Hooters NBA golf tour car. Jeff Agnew will line up in second spot. Rogers got the lead. Scott Sutherland a few moments ago. Mark McFarland will come to third now because per year had the problems. And Rogers just took off last time on the restart. Yeah, and I think he can do the same thing. If Jeff Agnew's going to get a shot, he's got to stay with him because he's only going to get one shot at this deal. But you got to wonder what happened to Stacey Perry. Missed a gear or whatever because he was having a great run here tonight. Well, McFarland, we've seen some smoke out of the back of the Junior Motorsports Chevrolet, but he is ready to go. We see it again there. How about Billy Bigley restarting fourth? This could be Bigley's best outing of the year by far in that fearless woodworking 25 car. Experience always has a way of coming back to you, and, and Billy's got a lot of laps here running the all-pro division along with this Hooters deal, and I'll tell you what, you've got to put your money on experience. Rogers, the defending series champion, a couple of runner-up finishes this year, hasn't been able to break through and get to victory lane. Would like nothing more than to bag the win here tonight at Bristol and validate his 2005 effort. Ready to restart one more time. 
Green flag is back in the air on lap 153. Two laps to conclusion now. Green, white, checker. And here comes Sarvis. On the outside, trying to get up alongside Bigley. Sarvis, who led laps and led it halfway. Rogers takes off. Should see the white flag this time by. Jeff Agnew trying to figure out a way to get up there in the last half mile. Clay Rogers is out in front. Agnew in second. Down the back stretch one final time. Wow, did you see Clayton Rogers' car bounce around? Something has had to have gone wrong in the left front corner. I don't know if he can make it. He is. He does make it home. Everything goes right at the end for Clayton Rogers. Big scramble for position deeper in the field. But the Johnny Suzuki Schaefer's Oil team gets their first win of 2005. Mark McFarland's wind fuel Chevrolet blows up on the last lap. He should get a top five out of it, though, as well. Jeff Agnew runs second in the Hooters NGA Golf Tour 73, but Rogers wins the Food City 150, presented by Naturally Fresh tonight here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Clay Rogers started in second spot, nearly taken out in a lap five incident, had to fight his way from the back of the pack, and for Rogers, a win that certainly makes a statement as we get very close to the five-race championship drive coming up this fall, starting at the end of September. When we come back, we'll talk to our winner in victory lane. This telecast of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurant. Hooters makes you happy. Miller Lite, the official beer of USAR. Miller Lite, it's all. Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil is the worldwide leader in heavy duty and high performance lubricant. And by Jackaroo Sauce. Jackaroo, served in some of the world's finest backyards. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, a reverse victory lap by Clay Rogers in honor of the late great Alan Kowicki, who was killed several years ago on his way to this very speedway. Rogers with his first win of the season. And that Schaefer's Racing Oil, Johnny Suzuki, number 44. Rogers establishing himself as a driver to watch as we prepare for the championship run here in 2005. Well, let's hear from the third place driver, Mark McFarland. He's with Steve. 13 Pro Cup starts this year for this young man. 10 top 10 finishes. So, Mark, I would say, man, you're on a hot streak, but you've been on it all year. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, we barely made that one. He, he would not make one more lap. But, uh, motor ran hot all night, and, uh, you know, the car just made up for it. The car was working so great. Man, they couldn't have got it any better. And, uh, you know, we just hung in there. And happy for all the guys. Junior Motorsports team did an awesome job on Bit Road. And our sponsor, Wind Fuel, and we're looking good in that championship. You know, and, and as soon as you came in, there was just steam rolling off this car everywhere. How long have you been fighting this? Uh, it was overheating the whole time. It just wasn't real bad. Uh, it got real bad there about 20, 30 to go. And uh, I didn't know if we was going to make it or not, but that all motor specialist engine held in there. You know, I wondered if you had anything for, for the leader early on about lap 120 to 130. It seemed like you were making a big charge past the 01 car and had a good battle there. Yeah, it was kind of a weird race, pitting on lap eight and then uh, trying to come back up to him. But, man, that's what you had to do. Track position was everything. And the tire, BF Goodrich tires held together, and we were able to come home third. Mark, the future looks incredibly bright for you. I know you have an announcement. You're moving on to another series very, very soon. What's Pro Cup meant to you? Oh, it's meant everything. I mean, our heart's still here. We're going to... We're going to go out to the championship 100%, and uh, we'll worry about that Bush deal next year. But uh, we're flying again at the end here tonight. Get on down here, Clay Rogers. You told me earlier today you would give up the Southern Division title for a win at Bristol. Does it feel as good as you thought it would? I tell you, this is awesome. I mean, you, race track like this, you just never know if you'll ever get another chance to win at Bristol. Uh, I've been sitting in front of the TV for as long as I can remember watching races here, and, and to, to win a race here, get to drive up on the top of the, or the driver's lounge here, and just, uh, man, what a feeling. I just, I don't even know how to put it into words. At what point did you feel like you had the car to win tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, about lap two, <laughs> but then I changed my mind after lap four. Then, uh, you know, we had a little skip in the motor, and I just I kept on the restarts. I wouldn't get a run up off the corner. And I think the float level was too low or something, and uh, 
I guess Shane was behind me at the start finish line and, and he dove and I just didn't have time to respond. But uh, I just, enough of that. It's Shane Frizzle, automotive specialist, great motor. My team back here, Johnny Suzuki, Baird Transport. Oh man, I just, uh, I can't, you know, it was really special. We had some special people here this weekend, some executives from Schaefer's Old Company and stuff come in and supported me personally for a long time. So I uh, just can't thank all these guys enough. We worked so hard to get here. Uh, this car was just a bare chassis and a body six days ago. So uh, 